There is no denying the popularity of pet ownership in the U.S. You can find a pet in nearly two-thirds of American households. And humans, we spend big on our furry friends, $136 billion last year. A Pew Research poll this summer found more than half of pet owners say they consider their pets as much a part of their family as a human. And while every pet owner makes the same bargain, enjoying that companionship while knowing it's for a limited amount of time, there is scientific research being done that could increase our pets' lifespans, and perhaps one day, our own. Oh, you are such a cutie. You are the cutest dog. Drop it. Drop it. Go get it. Whether it's playing fetch, taking a long walk, or just sitting around, retired physician Joe Seibel has a constant companion by her side, her golden retriever, Crypto. Okay, let's go, bud. bud. Ten years ago, as a puppy, Crypto was welcomed into Seibel's family after the sudden death of their beloved dog, Fenway. How much a part of your life is Crypto? Oh, he's, well, I hate to say this, but <laughs> this is going to sound weird, child, right? right? He is a big, big part of my life. Come on, let's go. It's why two years ago she enrolled Crypto in the Dog Aging Project, a wide-ranging study involving more than 46,000 dogs nationwide. You never usually give it up. Crypto took part in a double-blind experiment involving the drug rapamycin, which has been shown to extend the lifespan of mice and fruit flies. Dr. Daniel Promislau of the University of Washington is co-director of the Dog Aging Project. You said to me, a year or two extra for your dog, I'd sign up in a heartbeat. It could potentially be something that people regularly give their dogs, maybe later in life. Right now, we don't know that rapamycin will have any effect. Clinical studies like this take quite a long time. We're really interested in watching whether the dogs on rapamycin live longer and also whether they live healthier. The rapamycin study represents just a sliver of the research being done by the Dog Aging Project. The goal is to observe and collect data from as many dogs as possible throughout their entire lives. One of the things we're trying to understand is just what happens as a dog ages, and not only in terms of the diseases it gets, but also we're trying to understand how a dog ages and whether we can predict which dogs are going to be healthy agers, not healthy agers. We're measuring the environment. Are there diet factors that we can identify? Right. Are there social factors that impact how well a dog ages? It seems like the same way you would study this in humans. It's exactly the way you would study it in humans. The unfortunate thing is that dogs don't live very long, but what that does for us is that it allows us to answer these okay. questions in just a few years instead of having to wait 30 or 40 years. Is it possible that there's something that you will learn now about dogs that could translate to humans as well? What we learn about dogs is likely to also teach us a lot about humans because biologically, dogs are very similar to humans. The kinds of diseases that dogs get as they age are very similar to the ones that we get. So what we learn about both the causes of those things as well as ways to prevent those things or delay their onset are lessons that are likely to apply to humans as well. And Chateau is a pitfall. As a nonprofit, the Dog Aging Project is primarily focused on research and relies on funding from the National Institute on Aging and private donations. But private industry is also exploring pet longevity. San Francisco-based startup Loyal was launched by Celine Hollywa back in 2019. A dog mom to Rottweiler rescue Della with a background in neuroscience research, Hollywa and her team hope to develop a drug that could prolong the healthy years of a dog's life. I went out and I raised $5 million on the pitch deck and the idea. I think people went for it because it was so audacious that if it works, it's a really big deal. You say audacious, and to me it's like, no, this is a no-brainer. <laughs> because if you ask me what would I do for my dog, anything. And yeah. what would I do to have my dog around longer? The people who understand the science and the regulation and the laws and the complexity of building an FDA-approved drug, because we're not doing supplements. If they get approved, FDA-approved drugs. Right. Holly was raised over $38 million more in capital. And Loyal recently cleared an FDA hurdle with the goal of having a product on the market in the next two years.
I wanted to prove that this is legitimate science. I want us to achieve that high bar. This is like a, the heartworm pill yeah. that you would give your dog. Yeah, I, and I want people to be able to trust it. I don't want people to feel like they have to make a judgment call. <laughs> <laughs> Hollywa wears her dedication oh, to her company's Della mission on her sleeve, literally. Good girl. With tattoos dedicated oh, to the core oh, organisms oh, and animals used to study aging. Oh, yeah. So I have a C. elegans right here, and it was the animal in which it was shown for the first time that if you just modify one single gene in this worm, that it could extend its lifespan two to three X. So this is a black six mouse. Right. Um, this is the mouse that's kind of the, the workhorse, so to speak, of the research industry around understanding diseases. Uh, and then I have a black Labrador because a chloroposition study in black labs run by Purina in the late 90s that showed a two-year lifespan extension. I mean, a two-year delay on certain age-related diseases. And maybe one day I'll put a human down there or a Great Dane or something. We'll see. <laughs> I'm going to run out of arm space. But <laughs> Where are you going? Fellas. Oh. Part of Loyal's research was conducted at Muttville, a San Francisco rescue for senior dogs. Angela Romero is Muttville's chief veterinary officer. Her dog, Gil, came through the rescue and was part of the research. I got a report back um, a few months later which told me Gil's age, it told me some more diseases that he was prone to, specific kinds of dental disease. Wow. Was there any part of you that was skeptical about participating or about what they might be studying that this could actually work? Oh yeah, 100%. Um, really? That's, the, that's <laughs> yeah. the scientist in me. You're yeah. going to be a skeptic. But what was really awesome was they had some legit scientists behind this research, some preliminary studies that were really hopeful and legitimate. So <laughs> like, Fundamentally, there is a drug out there that will extend dog lifespan and dog health span. And we have done so much work in blazing the path for that to become something that people can, can have. And even if we don't make it to the finish line, which I believe we will, but even if we didn't, somebody else will. It's a finish line millions of pet owners, on, including please. Joe Seibel, would like to Where see crossed. Oh, look at you. I want him to have a good life because he gives me so much happiness. And I'd like him to live to be healthy. You know, he's, to me, he's more than a pet. I know he's not my, uh, a child, but he, you know, he is my co companion. Their family. Yes, he is my family for sure. Their yeah. family. I will admit it, I don't know that my dog is not my child. I know my Barkley's on the board there. We can't see him back here, but that's, that's my baby. He he's my baby. I'm telling you, though, he's seven right now, and I know that he, he's okay. like halfway through if I'm lucky. So the idea that you could extend the good years for a dog is amazing. The Dog Aging Project, which is the first one that we did, if you want to participate, they're still open. They want more dogs. Oh, really? So dogagingproject.org is where you can go. And then Hollywood study, if in two years you could have just a pill that they take once a month possibly that could extend those good years if they can find it, do it in a heartbeat. All right. Those of us who are looking for that extension on our lives. <laughs> and hi, Barkley, if you're out there. <laughs> he is. Hi, baby boy. <laughs>